CataractCoach.com, do you trust intraoperative aberrometry? So when you say 20 doctors, but your aura device is 21, what do you do? We have an anonymous surgeon who's operating the case, and the question posed by the surgeon is, what do you do when your device doesn't agree with you? And that's a great question. Now, this is just a routine case sent in by an anonymous surgeon, but the more important thing to discuss here is, do you do intraoperative aberrometry? What's the benefit to you? And what do you do when it differs from what you planned ahead of time? Now, you can do a study in your own clinic of your own lens calculations versus what you get with the intraoperative aberrometry. And when you do this, I would look at the eyes where the two differ. If the device agrees with you 100% of the time, well, then you don't really need it. You already know what to do. But if, let's say, the device agrees with you 80% of the time and then 20% of the time it differs from you, the question is, during those 20% those of cases, which was more accurate, you or the machine? And I did this in my own study, in my own clinic, in my own hands, my own patients, and I found that in the eyes where it differed, it was a coin flip. Half the time I was right, half the time the device was right. So that's really not very helpful. It's not very predictive. And it doesn't, you know, it was no better than literally a coin flip. So the question here is, if the machine is reading the eye, do you need to give it any other data? And here's what I mean. If I step on my bathroom scale to figure out my weight in pounds or kilos, do I need to enter into the bathroom scale my height and the size of my waist? No, it can just read what my weight is. So if the device is actually super accurate, wouldn't that be amazing? We would not have to do any pre-op biometry. Just have all the possible IOL powers in the uh, operating room, in the supply side, and then just measure the eye aphakic on the OR table and put in whatever lens it tells you. Ah, but it's not so simple. And so there are a lot of potential issues here. When you're measuring the eye in the aphakic state, we have to make sure that you clean everything else up, there's no cortex remaining. You need to make sure that you're also filling the eye to a physiologic pressure. There's not too much hydration of the wounds. And so you can see here, the surgeon's washing out any viscoelastic, which could change some of the readings. And now putting in clean viscoelastic, a nice clean view. And now let's see, checking the pressure, normal physiologic pressure. And now the lights are going to go out and the surgeon's going to use, there it is, now going to use the aberrometer. Now, the lights are out, the machine's still reading the eye, and I am always a fan of having more tools in the toolbox. I always want to have more devices to assist me in the operating room to give me better outcomes. But I think you need to do the study in your own hands, in your own clinic, and tell me, does it make a difference? And so the question here is, first, the surgeon measured the eye multiple times. The surgeon said 20 for the power. The machine said 21. So then the surgeon tried again. The machine says 21. The surgeon says 20 still. And tried a third time. And it was consistent. So now what do you do? Do you trust the machine or do you trust yourself? Or do you split the difference? And so he's going to make it look looks like a little LRI at the moment here. And now let's see. The surgeon decided to put in a 20.5. So splitting the difference. And I guess that's reasonable. But how did the patient turn out? Well, it turned out that the patient would actually be best served with the 20.0. Now, again, this is just an anecdotal thing. Keep in mind that there are other, other benefits of this device too, like for a toric lens to help you decide appropriate rotation. And that's obviously easier with the higher degrees of astigmatism and toricity. But in this case, the patient was still very happy, ended up a little bit on the, on the um, minus side because it's sort of put a 20 and a half, and then 20.0 would give perfect Plano, it's pretty darn close. So the patient's still pretty happy. You can see it looks like an extended depth of focus lens, and that can sometimes be more forgiving as well. So again, even in your own IOL calcs, if you actually look at experts who are great at lens calcs, in their own clinics, you may find they're only 75 or 80% accurate. It's kind of the reason why we're so driven to do our iowalcalc.com artificial intelligence lens calculations because we can achieve better than that. But fortunately, 
Anything you give to this patient is certainly better than the cataract, and the patient here had a very nice outcome. So my question to you, and I'd love to hear your comments here below, what do you do? Do you use intraop aberometry? And when the machine differs from you, what do you do? Do you follow the machine? Do you do what you think calculated originally, or do you split the difference? And I don't know if there is a right or wrong answer, so I'm here to learn from my audience. So please do leave a comment below so we can all learn from each other. Thanks for watching.